What's up guys, Iovo here, and welcome to a brand new video on the channel. Now in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to use Adobe Premiere Pro CC. I think one of the scariest things for beginners when it comes to learning Premiere Pro is how many different menus and screens you have, and you can easily become overwhelmed. Now, instead of making a tutorial where I go over every single function in Premiere Pro, because that would take hundreds of hours, I wanted to create a short guide for beginners that they can use as a reference. The purpose of this guide is to teach you all of the core functionality so that you can make your own videos with Premiere Pro. And in the future, if you want to make more complex edits to your videos, instead of Googling every single thing, because you have this core knowledge, you'll be able to find all of the functionality within Premiere Pro on your own. So with that being said, let's get started. So once we open up Premiere Pro, the first thing we want to do is create a new project and you can name this project whatever you would like. And then you can choose the location and decide where you want to save your project file. And you can click on browse to find the location. I'm going to save my file to my desktop and then I'm going to click on okay to create the project. Now, I know this interface looks very scary, but I promise you it's a lot simpler than it looks. At the top, we have the standard menu bar, and then right underneath over here, we can change our environments. So for most of the tutorial, we're going to be in the learning environment, but if you wanted to add effects or color correction, you would switch to the effects or color environments, for example. Here is your source panel. So before you add a clip, you can look at it over here and then trim it and then decide what components you wanna add. When you're actually going to be editing your video, you're going to see the preview on the right panel. On the bottom left panel, we're going to find all of our media once we import some files. And then right beside that, we have some tools that we can access really quickly that we can use to edit our sequence. Now your sequence is going to be where you have all of your video and audio layers. And you're going to see that once we add some media. And then on the very right side, you're going to be able to see all of your audio and see the audio levels when you play back the videos that you're going to be importing. So the first thing we're going to do is import media and all you have to do is double click in this box. You can also press command I or control I and then we're going to find our files. So I'm going to add two videos and I'm also going to add a song as well. So once we have our files imported, before we add them to our sequence, we can double click on them to preview them in the preview pane. And we can use this blue, uh, I think it's a rectangle, to scrub through and see how much of the video we wanna keep. Now we have the option of adding the entire video or we can trim it before we add it. And you trim by marking in and marking out to set the start and finish of the video that you want to add to your sequence. And you can also mark in and out by pressing I to mark in. So say we wanna mark in over here, and then we want this clip to play for maybe 10 seconds, and then we can press O to mark out, or we could use these two buttons, and then we can preview it by using the play stop toggle. And this clip looks good to add to our sequence. Now to add it, we could either add just the video, just the audio, or if we drag the actual clip over here, it'll import both the audio and the video together. Now you can easily navigate around the sequence interface. If you wanna move clips, you can simply just drag them. And if you want to make a certain layer bigger, you can just drag up or drag down. And if you wanna zoom out or zoom in horizontally, you can use this scrub at the bottom. So if you have a very long video, you're going to have to probably zoom out a lot. And then you can also press Alt and use your scroll wheel to perform the same task. And then you can use these buttons to preview your video. You can use this to go to the start, this to go to the end. And then these ones will let you go back and forth by one frame if you're making very small edits. So the first edit we're going to learn is how to split clips. And this is pretty easy. All you have to do is press on command or control K. And as you can see, it splits both the audio and the video. Another way we can also do this is by using the razor tool. So over here, you can change your cursor and each of these cursors have different functionality. And this one is the razor. So if we just click on the razor tool, it splits the clip up anywhere we'd like. And then if we go back to the normal, normal selection tool, we can click on a clip and delete it. Now we can move this clip and put it right over here and it'll go right beside the previous clip. But what you can also do is you can right click on any empty space and click on ripple delete. And this easily combines or gets rid of the space. And this ensures that there's no overlap. Now, one more way you can also split clips is by just going to the end of this clip and waiting for this orange arrow to show up. And you can also just drag to lengthen or shorten the clip. 
And there's also a few more different edits you can make within this window. You can right click on any clip and you can unlink it. And what this will do is this will separate the audio and the video. So if I was to unlink both of these clips, I can just delete the audio and then add my own music in later. And I can also right click and change the speed of this video by clicking on speed and duration. So if I wanted to slow this down, I can make this 80%, for example, and then I can just delete this one and I'll have this one slow clip with no audio. Now, before we add some effects, transitions, and other elements, we're just going to add our music as well. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on this and I'm going to add the music from the start after the intro component and then have it come out over here. And then I'm just going to drag this audio wave right underneath like so. And then I'm also going to just trim it so that it's the same length as the video. So I'm just going to go to the end of the audio track where it's in line with the end of the video, press Control K, click on the excess and delete it. And as you can see, we've added all the components and you can easily edit videos like this. You can also edit audio the same way by right clicking it and we're just going to go to audio gain and we're going to make it a little bit lower. And as you can see, the audio got quieter. We can also just drag this to make the track bigger and then alt scroll over here. And we can just bring the levels down by moving this line. So I'm going to bring it down to negative nine decibels. And then I'm just going to drag this so it's aligned. Now, if we want to add any effects to our clip, the best place to do that would be in the effects environment. So we're going to click on that and it's going to change the environment and load up all of the effects that we can add to our sequence. Now there's a lot that you can do in the effects environment. If we just click on the video clip, you can see all of the default properties on the top left and you can already change them so you can adjust the opacity of the clip as well as the speed. And then on the right side, you can also add all of your audio and video transitions and effects. So if you wanted to add a fade to black, we can just go to the video transitions and we can add a dip to black at the end just by dragging it over like so. And then we can see that the video is going to fade out into black. And then we can also click on this transition to edit it. And these settings will come up on the top left. Or we can go down here and just drag this dip to black to make the duration shorter, like so. We can also add video effects by clicking on the video effects folder. And here what we can do, for example, is add a blur. And if we just drag the blur on, it's going to apply the effect. And where all the properties were, we're going to see the camera blur property as well. And we can just edit that by using this pane and dragging the slider like so. And as you can see, the blur is changing. Now we don't need a blur, so we're not going to add it. But as you can see, it's very easy to add different transitions and effects. All you have to do is find them, drag them to your pane. And then within the properties for that clip, you can easily edit them. And you could add the transitions from the right side, but you can also do it by using keyframes. And I think it's important to cover the concept of keyframes because they are a key differentiator of Premiere Pro. And basically what a keyframe is, is it is a snapshot of the current state of the content and all of the properties within it. So if I have a keyframe where the opacity of a clip is 100%, and then a keyframe a second later where the opacity is 0%, then over time it's going to create a fade because the state of both of those keyframes is different in terms of their properties. And I'm going to demonstrate this by editing the audio. So we're just going to press Alt and scroll into the end of the audio over here. And to add a keyframe to the audio track, all we have to do is press Control. So I'm going to press Control. And as you can see, it's added a keyframe. And then I can also do that over here. And then what I can do is with this keyframe, I can drag it down. And that effectively fades out the audio because both of these keyframes have different properties for the audio levels. And over time, the delta in the two keyframes changes the audio causing a fade out. And we can do the same thing with the video and add a fade to the video as well. Learning how to keyframe in videos is even more important because not only can you add phase by changing the opacity over time, you can change the speed, you can zoom in or out of clips or move different elements because you can set all of that up by just adding two keyframes and changing the properties in the keyframes. So in order to do this, all you wanna do is click on your video clip and then we're going to go to opacity for this one. We wanna make sure that the toggle animation is selected and then you're going to click on this button to add a keyframe and a keyframe has been added to the start. And I want this fade to last about a second or so. 
So what I'm going to do is go to one second and then click on this button to add another keyframe. And then what I can do is double click on this keyframe to open up the properties for that keyframe. And I'm going to change the opacity to zero. And then I'm going to go to this keyframe and change the opacity to 100%. And now what we have is we have two different states of the video that are second apart. And at the very start, the opacity is zero, but over that one second, it adjusts to the second keyframe where the opacity is 100%, and this creates a fade. And you can do the same thing for the position or scaling, as well as the camera speed and other effects as well. So keyframing is a very powerful tool. Now the last thing you're going to do is add some text, and you can add text by clicking on the text tool over here, and then just clicking on your screen to add it. And as you can see, the text is created. So I'm just going to put in uh, introduction like so. And then what we can do is we can go back to the regular selection tool and we can just move this wherever we want. So I'm just going to make this bigger. I'm going to alt scroll out and I'm going to move this graphic so that it is in line with the rest of the video. And then I'm going to click on it and it's going to open up the properties for this text, which is considered a graphic. And I'm going to go to the text component, click down and it opens up all of the text properties. And here, what I can do is I can change the size, I can change the font. So I'm going to do all of that really quickly, like so. And then it, I can also change the fill and also add strokes and other effects. So I'm just going to make this a light gray, and then I'm going to add a stroke. I'm going to quickly just change the width of the stroke to maybe 15, make the fill a lighter white, make the font a little bit larger. And I think that looks good. So I'm going to just move it over here like so. And then I can also add transitions to this clip as well by going into the video transitions, which are down here. And I can add a dip to black at the start and at the end. And this works the exact same way. You just click on the effect and you drag it to the layer, and then you can adjust it by clicking on it or by just dragging it to make it shorter. Now, if you wanted to add some color correction, you can just click on the color tab and you'll be taken to the color environment. And color correcting is very complicated. There's a lot of different things that you have to do, but I'm just showing you how to get there. And then you can click on the video clip and you can add all of the basic corrections and creative corrections. So if you wanted to just, you know, change the contrast, for example, you can drag the slider and it'll do that. And you can adjust all of the other settings, but I would highly recommend you watch a tutorial for how to color correct. And you can also add your own presets by using the input look functionality. Now we're just going to quickly play the video back to make sure it's what we want. And this is a really nice intro. It has the fades, the audio, and the text. So I'm going to just control S and save this file and then go to file, export media, or you can just press command M or control M for windows. And it's going to open up the export box. And here you're going to make the format H.264. If you click on the output name over here, it'll open up this window and you can rename your file as well as choose where you want to save it. So I'm going to save this to my desktop and just save it as test, click on save. And then for the format or for the preset, sorry, we're going to go down and we're going to select YouTube 1080p full HD. And that is the perfect preset for what we're looking for. And then you just click on export to export it. And that's all you have to do. So now you know all of the basics of Premiere Pro, all the way from importing your media to combining your clips, to adding all the elements and effects you need to create the perfect video. So that's about it for this tutorial. If you guys did like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching. My name is Iovo and I'm signing out.